Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing Mario Kart DS for the... Do I even need to say it? Nintendo usually loves naming games after their hardware. However, most of my thoughts on this game are actually going to come from the Wii U Virtual Console version, as that's how I experienced most of the substantial single-player content. So for starters, Mario Kart DS came at a time when Nintendo was trying to transition into the online world. So its biggest selling point was the fact that it was the first Mario Kart game in which you could go online and face people all over the world with the, at the time, Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, which unfortunately has become debunked, except if you know how to hack. So its biggest selling point has became basically non-existent. So, now that Wi-Fi is all but basically in the past, now that we have to go by Nintendo accounts and Nintendo Switch Online, what's the reason to play Mario Kart DS anymore? Well, I'm glad you asked, because in my opinion, what really sets this game apart is that it's the only Mario Kart game released on a Nintendo system that actually tries to give people playing alone enough of an incentive to keep playing as opposed to, oh, this is better enjoyed with friends, so just wait until you have someone over. But first, let's talk about the core gameplay. So I just came off of playing Mario Kart 64, and didn't play a whole lot of Double Dash or Super Circuit, because I didn't like the controls for either one of them. So I'm glad to say that this feels like a wonderful compromise to Mario Kart 64's clunkiness. At first, I was a little bit disappointed by how the drifting mechanics were done, but then when I figured you just shake the control stick left and right a whole bunch, then it made drifting way easier and way more convenient. I feel like this is a great newbie-friendly compromise to people, like my best friend, who just simply aren't good at drifting around tight turns. The item balance is also pretty nice. I feel like the game favors more shield-type items when you're in first place, and more catching up items when you're in last place, which is really nice because Mario Kart 64 seemed a bit unfair at times. This also introduced two brand new items in the form of the Bullet Bill, which was basically the autopilot before Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came along, and the Blooper, which covers your screen in ink. It still baffles me why you would be excited to have that as a power-up, as the computer players don't seem to be affected, but... It does give you a nice excuse to look at the bottom screen, which is actually possible even on the Wii U version that I played. If you're playing it on the TV, you can have it so that the gamepad displays your map. And if you're playing it on a regular DS, this is really a cool tool because you can see who's right behind you, which makes lining up shots earlier. And juxtaposing the bottom and top screens when you're playing mission mode really makes some of those later missions really easy when you have to keep track of certain objects that you have to grab. Mario Kart DS also looks pretty impressive for an early 3D handheld game. A lot of the environments have a surprising array of details, and there's also a huge selection of tracks from past Mario Kart games that make the cut. So even Tracks that were originally rendered on the Nintendo 64 and GameCube actually look just as good as, and in some cases better, than their console debuts, especially those N64 tracks. So overall, Mario Kart DS has a fun selection of carts, but does it have enough to keep you invested? Because one of my biggest concerns about Mario Kart 64 was that there wasn't a whole lot to unlock. Well, Mario Kart DS definitely fixes that problem by not only giving you hidden characters, entire hidden cups, but even entire options that you can't get to until you beat the game. At the start, each character can choose between two different carts, and they actually have statistics to them. Eventually, you can change that so that they have seven carts to choose from, and then you can eventually unlock the ability for every character to use every cart, even if it's someone else's, which probably paved the way for Mario Kart 7 to a certain degree. Also, some of the unlockable characters are pretty darn random. One I won't spoil for you, but man, that was that was definitely a surprise to everyone involved. Mario Kart DS also, for perhaps the first time in the series, offers a lot of the multiplayer content also available in single player. And as it seems, just to emphasize the point, you actually choose whether you want to do single player or multiplayer before you even start the game. You can still set up a versus match with CPUs and even make them on a team. You can do battle mode with CPUs. Why was that not in Mario Kart 64? I have to know. 
and there's a whole mission mode. So let's talk about that, because you guys are probably getting dead curious. Like, okay, Paul, tell us about the big thing that sets this apart from other Mario Kart games. Well, there is an entire subsection just for single players where you have a set of objectives that you need to follow in a looped part of different tracks. Most of the time these are pretty simple, such as driving through numbered gates in a certain order, collecting all the coins, Super Mario Kart style, or even racing an opponent to the finish line. I really liked the structure of a lot of these missions because it showed that the developers really understood the layout of the tracks, especially the retro ones, and managed to convert them to different styles of play. It really is interesting to see how Moo Moo Farm, which was one of, one of my most played courses in Mario Kart 64, be transformed in so many ways that I never would have imagined possible. However, a lack of communication really hurt this mode for me, and this is entirely my fault, not a gripe against the game, just a gripe against the source that I looked at. I thought that in order to reach the boss at the end of every world in mission mode, you had to get at least a star ranking on every mission. But as it turns out, that's only if you want to unlock the hidden world. If you just want to do a rough playthrough like I did, you can just play the missions and beat them. The ranking system is kind of weird in mission mode, as the lowest you can get is about a C or a D, and the highest you can get is three stars. So why couldn't they have just made it entirely letter or star based? Then if, if a player got an A, then they wouldn't feel like they were cheated out of a victory, because generally speaking, here in America, if you're scored an A grade on something, that means you're really good. So that should be something to celebrate, not to moan about. As it is, it is really nice that this game incorporates boss battles. Again, why has this not returned in Mario Kart? They take the traditional Mario Kart formula and put you in a battle mode type of arena where you have to damage the boss enough times, and in some cases you don't want to damage the boss, but avoid them. And these make really good use of the sound effects and 3D models of Mario Kart games past. My only gripe was that there weren't enough of them, and a lot of them were over so quickly that you hardly had time to enjoy them. Now, there are a couple of other little tidbits that set Mario Kart DS apart, even if they don't translate very well onto the Wii U version. For example, you can create your own emblem that displays on your cart and also gives a little bubble above your head so that everyone can see who you are. This is kind of pointless if you're playing single player, but it can be a nice touch if, say, you want a Sans logo on your cart. However, depending on the sensitivity of the touch screen is really going to affect your creativity, or maybe I'm just a terrible artist and I didn't even bother with this, so if there is anyone out there who is better at drawing than me, please let me know your thoughts on this. Now, Let's talk about those multiplayer modes, which unfortunately is exclusive to the DS version at the moment, but I've also heard that cartridge is pretty darn dirt cheap if you just look at any video game store. Um, you basically have to have two DS's or three DS's and two copies of the game to get the full multiplayer experience. Otherwise, if one person has the game, then you can play via download play, or local play as it's called nowadays. However, this greatly restricts the amount of content that you're able to get. You only have access to a select handful of the tracks, and to make things worse, the player who doesn't have a copy of the game is stuck playing as Shy Guy, which I guess isn't terrible. I mean, Shy Guy was pretty popular in Super Mario Bros. 2, but on the other hand, Shy Guy isn't actually unlockable in the main roster unless you're playing multiplayer mode. So the entirety of my Wii U playthrough, there was no way I could unlock Shy Guy. Not that I really cared. I stuck to Mario every chance I got, unless mission mode forced me to be a different character. Not a big deal, but Shy Guy fans are probably going to raise their pitchfork and do a We Want Shy Guy Mario Kart rally. I mean, it must have worked, as he's in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8, so... I guess you can put down your pitchforks for the future entries, folks. So, um, Mario Kart DS controls okay on the original DS. I personally found it kind of a hassle, as I feel like the control stick is really the best way to go. 
and the Wii U control stick worked perfectly fine. It didn't feel like Super Mario 64 DS, where it felt like this was designed for a circle pad, yet I'm playing it with a stick. It felt like this is how the game was meant to be played. And especially if you have the top screen graphics on the TV, Mario Kart DS at times looks stunning for its time. I mean, Mario Kart 7 came along. But the fact that they could recreate so many retro courses, and then even having a whole bunch of new courses of their own, is really impressive. The music also stands up pretty well, although in my opinion they really butchered the N64 tracks, and when you play Black Forward in battle mode you can't even hear the iconic music! I don't know what they were thinking there. Mario Kart 64 had great music as much as I didn't like everything else in it. Let's briefly touch on the battle mode before I go, which is actually good! Unlike Mario Kart 8's original Wii U release. So you only have two options, Balloon Battle and Shine Runners. Balloon Battle was weird at first because it said to blow into the microphone if you wanted to inflate your balloons, but this must be talking about when you're not playing on a team, as when I tried to do that, nothing happened. Not only that, but I'm getting old, and so I can't really handle blowing really hard like I used to be able to do, so I wish there was an adult-friendly alternative to this. Thankfully, Shine Runners was a lot more fun. You just had to look for the Shine Sprite on the course and grab it before anyone else grabbed it. And it was timer-based, so it was really a whole lot of grab-and-avoid type of gameplay, which is really nice. There are six battle tracks, and... Three of them are new, and the other three, or other two, like I said, didn't play much of uh, Super Circuit and Double Dash, but the ones that are returning look really nice, but they don't have the original music, so that's what is really bothering me. However, the fact that they're all really well designed and feel like they are perfectly symmetrical is definitely a point in favor of the battle mode. So, your enjoyment of DS is really gonna depend on how many people you have and also what's your style of Mario Kart. For me personally, I was kind of annoyed that this game relies way too much on getting good items if you want to do well in the race, and the fact that if you master snaking you can like cheese everything in the game, but the fact that I couldn't do it meant that I was gonna be terrible. Also my lack of communication with how to get the missions and the fact that the, the unlock structure, while it's cool that they have a lot to unlock, is also really strange. Like, you have to be each individual CC in order to unlock things, and then even when you do, some things are only unlocked within that CC. So if you want to play all of the hidden tracks on all of the difficulties, then you have to unlock them in all of the difficulties. I really wish there was a more unified system to draw the game together, but who knows, maybe Nintendo's just testing the waters, making an actual 3D Mario Kart on a handheld. That doesn't really excuse the Virtual Console version, but oh well, I had a blast. Not a perfect blast, mind you, but this was definitely a lot better than I thought it would be. And I would highly encourage you guys to give it a shot if you're looking for a good Mario Kart game on the go, and you don't have the budget to get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, concerns, or critiques, or if there is something I might have missed in this review, please leave it in the comments section. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and the next handheld Mario Kart game better not have microtransactions or I am going to be angry. Bye bye